We're digging into the Old Testament and looking at one of the good kings of Judah during this time period. Jehoshaphat. Everybody say that with me. Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Strange name. Yeah. Here's the key verses in the story, okay? They're listed here. 2 Chronicles 17, 3 and 4. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because in his early years he walked in the ways of his father David. His, in, in the ways his father David had followed. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. Okay, the key verses. And we, we looked at last week, he was a man of great character and we saw his character by his stand against his enemies. We talked about how as a believer in Christ, in order to be a godly person, we have to learn first to stand against our enemies. And our enemy, of course, primarily is Satan, our biggest enemy. And also we pray for our earthly enemies. This is the Christian response to our uh, earthly enemies and then we wear the armor of God so in order to be God we must prepare ourselves uh, let me just say this because uh, the next two weeks not not this week but next week and the following we'll have a little different service here I've asked Pastor Weaver to share for about 20 minutes in the service and Miss Minnie also in full Korean the second 20 minutes in the service. And we're going to deal with some issues of godliness, especially in regards to internet pornography. And we're going to talk very frankly and openly about it in the service the next two Sundays. And, uh, and then I want to uh, close the services with time of prayer and seeking the Lord. Uh, if we're not directly involved in it, we probably, most of us know someone that is hooked or involved in internet pornography and we're just going to pray for each other ask God to really do a work in our hearts and minds that will be over the next two weeks okay but today and at last week we talked about uh, we can see his character because we saw that the presence of God was with him uh, and then try, I tried to give you some principles about living a godly life. Be sure that God is with you. Be sure that God is with you. And uh, how, how we have to often remind ourselves of God's presence. We say God is omnipresent. Omnipresent means everywhere present at the same time. And because God is spirit, He can do that. And so we have to often remind ourselves God is here. And not only here, but He's with me. God is with me. And uh, this is a tremendous encouragement. And it's an exhortation to godliness. Living godly. We also see King uh, Jehoshaphat's character by the life he lived. He lived a life of piety or godliness himself. He sought to follow godly examples. That was the example of his father David. At least the good examples of his father David. He forsook idolatry, turned from uh, idol worship, and des destroyed idols in the land. And he followed after God's will and resisted the pressure to bend with the compromising situations. That was Jehoshaphat. All, and so today, that's where it brings us, okay? And this is part two in uh, 2 Chronicles 17. There's a lot more to his story, and so in a few weeks, we can return to the story of Jehoshaphat. But uh, today, I want to try to finish up chapter 17 in 2 Chronicles. Amen? Amen. God is really good to us, and uh, we love Him and th very grateful for God's mercy and His grace. Where would we be without God's mercy? 
Well, we would be lost. Lost forever without God's mercy. But the good news of the Gospel is God loved the world. He extended His love to us first. He took action toward us first. And so I want us to take a minute and pray and just kind of bow our heads and thank God for showing His love toward us first. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to You. What a blessed opportunity for us to look at Your Holy Word and to think about who You are and how You worked in the life of this King and how You used Him in the kingdom of Judah and how He had to take His stand for His belief in the true God. And Father, help us to take our stand also in our belief in the true and the living God. And then, Lord, we know through Jesus You have revealed Yourself to us. So we thank You for that. We know, Lord, that those that come to You must believe that You exist. And they must believe that You reward those that diligently seek You. And Lord, here we are seeking You today. Open heart, open mind. Father, help us to hear from heaven through the Holy Scriptures. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let's look at 2 Chronicles 17 again, verse 1. Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king in, and strengthened himself against Israel. He stationed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and put garrisons in Judah and in the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because in his early years he walked in the ways of his father David. He did not consult the Baals but sought the God of his father and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. Now verse 5 is about where we'll start today, okay? The Lord established the kingdom under his control and all of Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat so that he had great wealth and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. In the third year of his reign, he sent his officials, ben Hell, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nethanel, Micaiah, to teach in the towns of Judah. With them were certain Levites, the priest, Shimeiah, Nethaniah, Zebediah, Asael, Shemiramoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tob Adonijah. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> I got through those, okay. And the priest Elishama and Jehoram. Wow. Okay. They taught throughout Judah, taking with them the book of the law of the Lord. They went around to all the towns of Judah and taught the people. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land surrounding Judah so that they did not make war with Jehoshaphat. Now, there's more to the chapter, but this is basically the text I want to use today in order to talk about Jehoshaphat and how he, he became a man of great popularity and prosperity. Okay? And I just want to look at this because um, in life, sometimes we have times of poverty. Sometimes we enjoy times of prosperity. Uh, sometimes we have times of popularity. And then sometimes we're not so popular. This is life. Period. We have to face it. 
we have to face that things don't always go our way, but other times they do go our way, at least seem that way. For some, it seems that it always goes their way. For others, it seems like things never go their way. What's my answer to that? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But that is honestly life. We have to deal with what we've been given, right? And in dealing with that, we want to look at it with a, a, a Christian worldview. We want to look at life in a way that would honor God. Whatever comes our way, that we might be able to honor God in it. Popularity has to be put in its proper place. In order to really be popular, and I think most everybody wants to be, we have to first be sure of God's blessing. Look in uh, verse 5. The Lord established the kingdom under Jehoshaphat's control. Being sure of God's blessing. This little word, established, now, has the idea that the kingdom was strengthened while Jehoshaphat was king. It was strengthened. It was made better. It was able to stand against its enemies. It was able to be uh, a significant uh, ruling authority under Jehoshaphat. And the people acknowledged it too. They brought gifts to him and honored him. And as a result, his popularity and his kingdom, his authority increased as a result of that. I want to talk to you a few minutes about being sure of God's blessing. Being established by the Lord. Uh, it's a very important point for your life, for mine. And uh, when we think about God's strength and God working in us, no matter what we're doing, whether it's uh, you know as a, a teen, teen, teenager or a child, and God's blessing upon our life, or whether uh, as a husband in my family, uh, it, it, have I been established or, or am I establishing my home in a way that would honor God? Or if, as an employee, one that has work to do, uh, am, are the things that I'm doing with my hands honoring God? These are good questions to ask and when, when, uh, of ourselves. And what is it God expects of me? Be sure of God's blessing. Joseph found God's blessing at least at this point in the story. We can see later where he failed and we're going to look at that because it's very important to consider not only the times of prosperity but also times of failure and mistake because all of us have them. And by God's grace, can we uh, succeed when we prosper? Or do we fail when we prosper? Think about this being sure of God's blessing. I want to go to uh, Romans chapter 10, New Testament. Romans chapter 10. Stay with me here, okay? Good to see Taeyang here with his father and his sister. She's here all the way from Peru. Wow. I spoke to her in English. She answered me in Spanish. And I understood her. Yeah. In Spanish is muy poquito. It's a little more than my Korean though. <laughs> but you'd be surprised what I understand when I hear it. Be careful. Okay. <laughs> My wife always says to me, how did you know what they said? I can feel it. I can feel it. It, it bypasses my brain. It goes to my heart. I feel what they're saying. <laughs> Sometimes I'm wrong. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
Hallelujah. Romans 10, 3. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God, and they sought to establish, there's that word again, English word establish, their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Okay. Now, in the context of Romans 10, it's referring to the Jewish way of salvation. That they were depending on the law and their ability to keep all the points of the law in order to make themselves acceptable to God. This was a salvation birth based upon works. And we know that the Gospel of, of the New Testament is salvation based on grace, not works. That we are accepted by God based on our faith in the shed blood, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and our belief that Jesus is alive from the dead and that He is the one who makes us right with God. But the Jewish people set forth to establish, to strengthen themselves in the idea, I will make myself righteous. Okay? It's a wrong idea. And uh, the Bible all points toward this message of the Gospel. Where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first, the doors open to the Jew, and then to the Gentile, that's all of us, the doors open. This wonderful Gospel, this wonderful good news of Jesus Christ is for us all to enjoy. Now, when the Lord established Jehoshaphat, okay, He established him based on Jehoshaphat's simple belief that God was with him. Remember last week. Simple belief. Now, that's Romans 10. Look at um, 2 Thessalonians 3. 2 Thessalonians 3. You know, we're getting into small books, so they're a little harder to find unless you've got your phone. Right? That's right. 2 <laughs> Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, first Timothy, second Timothy. Okay. Second Thessalonians three. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you. That strengthen is the is also translated as establish. Okay? Remember we said how, how was Jehoshaphat established? Well, he was strengthened. He, his, the nation became strong and uh, became a very uh, uh, strong power. The Lord is faithful and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing uh, that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. Okay, now think of this, okay? Paul is writing to a group of believers in uh, Greece, in Thessalonica, who were suffering because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, and so his word to them was that the Lord is faithful and He will establish or strengthen them in their faith in Christ. Okay? Be sure of God's blessing. Where is God's blessing? Our establishing ourselves has to be in our faith in Christ first. There is real no, there's really no prosperity outside of that. There is a worldly sense of prosperity. Now we understand that. We understand that, but it's really a different view for a Christian because this is where confusion comes in. Many Christians think worldly prosperity equals God's blessing. That is wrong. Many Christians think this. 
Now, we all want to prosper as much as anyone else. We'd be kind of foolish if we didn't want to. Okay, this world we live in, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So our thinking is different. The prosperity that the believer looks for is the blessing of God, the peace that rules our hearts in Christ, and the desire to do what God wants us to do now, rather than just what we wanted to do before. You with me? It's really a different way of looking at things. And if we look at it, God and His will first, then He establishes us and so the poor man, the poor believer can be just as prosperous in the Lord while he's poor than the rich believer is. Just They're just as prosperous because of faith in Christ. Now, that doesn't mean uh, the Bible clearly teaches the believer is to work hard and earn his income. Amen? Amen. If a believer is not working hard to earn his income,